Hey everybody, I'm working on a number of repair videos at the moment but just none are ready to go right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a post repair analysis of this Dell 3510. What I want to do is take down all of the voltages now that it's working so that we can compare it to any future Dell Latitude 3510s I might get in because they are quite a popular laptop. So let's do that now. Okay, so just for clarity, these are the measurements that I took when the laptop was powered on and booted up to Windows. So for taking these measurements, obviously I have my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground and we can start taking measurements. So we discussed in our previous video that pin 6, 7 and 8 is where our positive DC input comes in. So with the laptop now powered on and working, I place my probe to pin 7 and I find that it measures 19.86 volts. Now the adapter says it's a 19.5 volt adapter, but as I'm sure you're familiar with at this stage, a lot of them are a little bit higher than that. So there's nothing wrong with that. So that's 19.86 volts on pin 7. Now that 19.86 volts has a straight pad from pin 7 down onto the source pins of the first MOSFET which corresponds to this MOSFET right here. So we just confirm that on the source pins we also have 19.86 volts and we do. Now this first MOSFET as we saw last week is a P-channel MOSFET so it should be switched on with a low gate signal. So I measure the gate signal and I find that it measures 3.24 volts so that should be switched on. And that is the same value as I measured last week when the board was actually short. So with a gate signal of 3.24 volts, that means that this MOSFET should be switched on. And at the drain pins, I should be measuring the same as the input voltage. So I place my probe to the drain pins of this MOSFET, and sure enough, I measure 19.86 volts. And I take a measurement at the drain pins of the second MOSFET, just to confirm that we have 19.86 volts there also. Now for anybody who watched last week, you may remember that our input voltage was good from our pins here through our first MOSFET and up until the drain pins of the second MOSFET. But what I discovered then was that the gate pin was 19.20 volts and that the source voltage was lower than it should be. So what we want to see is, now that I have a working laptop, what are the values for the gate and what are the values for the source pins? And measuring the gate pin of that second MOSFET, I find it measures 1.8 volts. So that's a low signal, meaning that this P-channel MOSFET should be switched on. So I should have whatever is on the drain coming through to the source. So let's check that as well. And measuring at the source pins of the second MOSFET, I find that it's 19.86 volts. So we now have our full input voltage coming through the two MOSFETs, and everything now looks good. So just to be clear what's happening here. Last week... When I first started repairing this laptop, VSYS was completely short. Now that was somehow communicated back to ISL 9538C and that kept the gate pin of the second MOSFET, which is this one right here, Hi, you might remember we had 19.20 volts on the gate pin of this last week and that was deliberate in order to block our input voltage at this point to prevent any further damage to the laptop. However, now I have removed the short from here and everything is okay so there is no need for this to pull the gate signal on this it is happy to provide the correct gate signal to the gate pin which is 1.8 volts and we are now getting our input voltage the whole way through to up to this point so the next point in line is the current sense resistor I have followed this around to where the current sense resistor is and we're going to take a measurement here so once again multimeter volts DC Place my probe to the current sense resistor and we find that it measures 19.86 volts also. So we've established that we have 19.86 volts at this point here on the current sense resistor. That then flows on to Q1 and Q2 which correspond to these two MOSFETs right here. So the next measurement I want to check is right here at this inductor. So let's do that. So I place my probe to either the drain pins here or the source pins here. That corresponds to essentially this halfway point. And when I measure there, I find that it measures uh, 2.38 volts. And the last voltage measurement I want to take here is of our VSYS power rail. This was obviously zero when it was shorted last week. But now that our laptop is up and running, I want to see what this actually should be. So placing my probe to where we 
found vsys last week which is right here i measure that and i find that it measures 17.59 so 17.59 volts is our vsys so what have we learned from our post repair analysis well i guess this laptop is a good example of the self-protection mechanisms that the laptops have built in so when we had a short on vsys the system was clever enough to switch off the power coming in to the board at this point here. The IC sent a high gate signal of 19.20 volts to the second MOSFET which kept it switched off and that prevented our voltage from our adapter coming past and into the laptop and possibly causing further damage. The last thing I want to do with this laptop before I sell it is to take down the values at each of the secondary inductors. So this is a Dell Latitude 3510. It's quite a popular laptop. I'm sure we will get another one in the future with some sort of motherboard issue. So I will take down those values at each of those secondary inductors and I will post in the description below. And that's where I'm going to leave it for this week, guys. This week's video is a little shorter. I spent a lot of hours on last week's one and I needed to get some hours back to put into other things this week so I didn't have as much time to devote to this video as what I put into last week's one but look I've got plenty of content coming up I've purchased six power adapters from the UK that are all faulty so I'm going to try and progress on the switch mode repairs Um, I'm also getting in a couple more dodgy laptops and we're gonna see if I can get those back up and running again so Keep watching, keep liking, keep subscribing, and I'll keep making these videos. Thanks for watching.